So, Alberto Arroyo Schnell, you've talked to the forum this morning in the first session, really looking at integrating climate mitigation, biodiversity regeneration, and ultimately looking at food system transformation, which is really where the focus of the forum lies today. From what you said to the forum, from what you heard, what's one of the main messages? How would you frame the debate this morning? Thank you very much for having me here today. I think the debate is a very fundamental one. It's about how we want to change the food systems. It's about what we eat and it's about where we live, our environment. So at the moment, if you want, one of the key messages that I get from what we have been discussing, and I think that we all agree on that, is that we need to change. And that's maybe the only challenge, which is the how. And when it comes to what can be done, there are a number of sustainable agriculture approaches that can be used. Actually, sustainable agriculture is not only one way of doing the things, it's multiple. And that is helpful because it means that for different circumstances, administrative, biogeographical, any other, we can use different ways of doing the things. There, I would like to actually refer to a recent publication that we have from IOCN, Sustainable Agriculture Approaches. And you will read there all this difficult sometimes terminology related with sustainable agriculture, regenerative agriculture, conservation agriculture, carbon farming, sustainable intensification, agroecology. All these are valid ways. At the very end, anyway, I have to say that one of the key conclusions that we got from this uh, discussion is that it all boils down to the practices, what is really done at the farm level. And there it doesn't matter how you call it. It is sustainable or it is not sustainable. And I think that one of the key issues that we have been discussing this morning and can be helpful to keep in, future, keep in, in our minds for the future is that it is possible. It is just a matter of making it happen from the perspective of regulators, farmers and all the different actors. Of course, you are the Head of Policy and Programme for the International Union for the Cons Conservation of Nature. And you mentioned your report there, which has been very significant in looking at that. One idea for a clear impact uh, and how we can change, because when we share these ideas at the forum, it's about looking at practical solutions. It's about being able to implement them and scale them up and do that within the policy framework. I know these are always big questions, but can you, can you pinpoint something that really does bring to life how this can work when we're talking about the transformation of food systems? Well, if in, it's a difficult question, but I have to say that one of the things that also came this morning, and I think we can all agree on, there is support. Uh, there is a lot of uh, fundamental budget related with sustainable, with agriculture, with the common agricultural policy. And at the moment, it's probably not all of it, or probably not for sure not all of it, directed to sustainable agriculture. So if we could redirect what is already being used for agriculture to ensure that a future that is sustainable, probably we will be in a better path. It's much more what needs to be done. You were asking me for one specific <laughs> question, and that's maybe one of the issues that probably is not an easy one even, but it's one of the fundamental ones that will help. Yeah. Of course, we had a psychologist talk to us at the start of uh, the session and looking at behaviours. So whether you think about using the stick or using the carrot to change behaviour, uh, he talked about that. Uh, and one of the issues that was raised was taxation of waste to change behaviour. What was your view and what did you hear on the debate there? Yes, uh, the, it was a very interesting presentation, by the way, very much suggested to take uh, a look at what uh, Per was telling us, because it goes beyond agriculture, by the way, it's about the way we behave for many issues that will help, hopefully, to change the world in terms of environmental sustainability. It is uh, probably one of the part of the solution, what uh, he was mentioning about the taxation. I would say that uh, there are many other issues that need to be included into this discussion, and one that I would like to uh, highlight here is also one that I highlighted this morning. There is a very strong similarity between the sustainable diet and the health diet. And if we make sure that we send the message to the citizens that at the very end are the ones that can make a change when it comes to, consume, to consumption, that uh, whatever you eat is not going to help your head, your health, excuse me, but also the environment, maybe it's a good starting point. But you did mention that, of course, environmental issues are a much harder sell if you like, than talking about the, the health benefits. And that's a barrier. That is uh, right. Um, I have to say that is not always the case, but in general, it is much easier to reach citizens as such as uh, a general word I'm saying as citizens mm -hmm. through the health concerns than through environmental concerns. So that can be a helpful approach to it. If you say that whatever is healthy for you in terms of food is also good for the environment. 
And because we're all kind of preaching to the choir in a way, we know the why of looking at food transformation and the food system transformation. And then finally looking at the how, regulation was very much a feature of your debate this morning. That is right. Uh, voluntary approaches are important and are actually working in a number of cases, but are surely not enough. And actually one of the messages I was also sending this morning is that we are maybe in the right direction. We are really going into more and more greener solutions, but we are not running enough. We are not in the speed that we need to be to ensure that we really tackle the issue. So regulation there can help. It was a very interesting example what Per was mentioning about the change in the smoking behavior before. It's a strong one, but uh, it's a way to see how different the things can be just introducing some kind of sometimes maybe strong provisions. So uh, this was Per Espin Stockness who, who said that smoking, the parallel, the regulation was there. Then, of course, it came soon after election, and so there was time to establish the regulation and, and see the results. Yes, and maybe I would like to add another example that can be also helpful here. Around 30 years ago, maybe we were not even thinking that it will be normal for us to separate the rubbish in different containers. And that is the most normal thing of the world. And even our children sometimes are better than us and doing this. Well, probably in future, if we're speaking about a transformation that needs to happen in the agricultural sector, probably this is something that we will see very different in future. Do you have an optimistic mode to end on? End on? You've mentioned the, the new generation coming forward, but at the same time, we know at the forum we've talked about time is not on our side. You know, the idea of you know, one minute to midnight and you know, this last chance saloon that we find ourselves in. But do you have hope as a final message, Alberto? I can only be optimistic. I am Spaniard and maybe that's part of it, but I definitely can only watch the future with a future to return. I think that we have advanced a lot. It's not the same as it was before. I mentioned recycling. We could mention many other issues like nature conservation and many others. We will be in our path and we should be. Actually, we learn slowly, unfortunately, but we finally do the things. I think that the society nowadays understands things much better. It was not easy to find the word biodiversity in the speeches of high-level politicians in the past, only maybe for some not so good issues. Now is the most normal thing of the world. We we have advanced. Thank you, Alberto Arroyo-Schnell. Thank you so much for talking to us today.